Okay, take a little bitty red butt back out and turn to song number four. Song number four. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, what a wonderful change that my life has brought. Since Jesus came into my heart, then your little red book, song number four. We're excited about this. It's an amazing change. Not just, it's not just a, a change in our eternal destiny. It's a change in our day-to-day -day life right here. Song number four. What a wonderful change in my life has been brought Since Jesus came into my heart I have life in my soul for which long I have sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart
We're going to go over a memory verse for the this Galatians. In the Galatians asked for Matthew. Remember, they have the wrong reference printed on our thing, and thus I didn't. See, I'm slacking on remembering what our reference is for this one. Galatians 6, 7 and 8. Galatians 6, 7 and 8. All right. It's the wrong reference. They ran away from us. Galatians 6, 7, 8. If you could stand, we'll go through that. Galatians 6, 7, 8. We'll read it together. Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Galatians 6, 7, and 8. All right, go and have a seat. Are we sowing to the flesh, or are we sowing to the spirit? Look at our lives, we can see, are we reaping joy, or are we reaping corruption? Maybe happiness, but is it happiness with corruption or not? <coughs> Anyways, also choir, after this next song, we could come up and sing, we're going to sing Since the Savior Found Me, the choir after this song, we'll be singing that. But for now, turn to song 308. We'll actually be in our red book. This week. <coughs> our bigger red book, song 308, 308. I'm pressing on the upward way, new height I'm gaining every day. What is our destination? Are we looking up or are we looking in front of us? Let's look up. I'm pressing on to higher ground, song 308. I'm pressing on the upward way. Oh, oh, oh. 
Bibles, turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Like I said, most of our the messages we're doing are out of the reading we've been going through. Children's church. Children's want to go away? Yeah. <laughs> well, Miss Glenda says the children get to go to children's church. If you'd rather not sit here and listen to me, you can go to children's church. Yeah, we're going. Miss Patty, you want to take James with you? Yes. He's coming. Go with Miss Patty? Yeah. Go to church. Come here, James. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't know whether they'll be in their and mm-hmm. what they're doing today, but we're in Second Thessalonians too. Second Thessalonians chapter three, we're starting in verse number one. We'll look at a few things here. A lot of this is actually something a lot of people say is a contradiction in the scripture. They, that's what they say, they talk about it. But I'm actually going to go through and show you one, not only how it's not, but how we need to apply it to what we're doing in our daily lives. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, we'll start in there in verse 1. It says, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may be may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we, we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, from all for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful, who, stab, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that you both do and will do the things which we command you. For the Lord And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into patient waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the traditions he, he received of us. For yourselves know that ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, or wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might be charge that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but we make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. You see there in verse number six, he's t- Paul here is writing to the Thessalonians, and he says, I'll get a little brief summary here. He says, instead, why, if, there, if these people are not following the traditions that we've set for them, then kick them out. That's basically what he's saying. Don't withdraw, he says, withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and followeth not the traditions which he received from us. We gave them some traditions, and they need to follow those traditions. If you think about it, there's other parts in the Bible where Christ is telling them, don't follow the traditions. 
But here, Paul is telling them, follow traditions. What's the difference? Is this, are they debating each other? Is Paul telling them to do something Christ told them not to do? No. He's not. We're going to look, we're going to look real fast at Matthew 15, Matthew 15, just the first few verses of Matthew 15. Matthew 15, verses 1 to 3, just the first few verses, says, Then Jesus, then came Jesus to the scribes and Pharisees, which were at Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Because you're a sinner if you don't wash hands before you eat, correct? That's what the Pharisees were telling them. They're not following the traditions. They're not washing their hands before they eat. They're sinners. They're wicked. You cast them out of the temple. Because, and Jesus replies, But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? The scribes were saying, Your disciples are not following the tradition by not wash, because they don't wash their hands before they eat. And Jesus said, You know what? You're sitting by following those traditions, by enforcing those traditions. So some people say, you know what, now Christ is saying don't follow the traditions. Christ says don't follow the traditions, and Paul says to follow the traditions. Go, also go to Mark, Mark 7. Mark chapter 7, this is another spot where the Pharisees are saying, or they're yelling at Christ and saying, telling them to follow traditions, and Christ is fighting back to that. Mark chapter 7, starting verse 5, go down to verse 13. And the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not the disciples according to the tradition of the elders, and eat bread with unwashed hands? This is like, I don't know if this is the same scenario or another one similar to it. It says, And he answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their hearts is turned from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrine and commandments of men. The doctrine and commandments of men, that's their traditions right there. For laying aside the commandment of God, Ye hold the tradition of men as washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. He said unto them, Full well ye have re reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own traditions, rejecting your own commandments, or rejecting God's commandments, that way they can keep their own traditions. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curses his father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is, it is Corban, that, he, that is to say, it is a gift. But whatsoever thou mightest be just, by whatsoever thou mightest be justified by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father and mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many, many such like things do ye. He's saying there's many things you're doing. You're following through the traditions. God says, honor your father and mother. In this, this particular one, God said, honor your father and mother. He said, it's okay if it's going to be so you can help your father and mother in a different way, so thus you dishonor them or disobey them. It's okay. It's okay. And God says, no. Just because it, you do that and everybody does it, doesn't mean it's the way to do things. Just because you have a tradition, if that tradition goes against the Bible, you need to stop following the tradition and start following the Lord. There's a lot of uh, 
a lot of things such as the way the Catholic Church does a lot of things, or Methodist Church does a lot of things, and several other churches out there do. They follow traditions that contradict the Bible. Yes. I'm thinking of a few right off, but there's several more, so I'm not even going to bother to mention what some of them are. I'll mention one, such as baby baptism. Is, tra is it tradition in uh, the Catholic Church to baptize babies? Yes. yes. Yeah. I think the Methodist Church does the same thing. I'm not sure. But anyways, they bap it's tradition. Yes. They look at it as tradition to baptize those babies. So they follow that tradition. That tradition is against the Bible. The Bible says do one way. Catholic Church says, no, we're going to do it this way. Because we've been doing it, the Pope says it's okay, so we're going to do it. You know what? I'm not saying the Pope's wrong in everything, but he's wrong in that one. Um, we, anyways, we follow the scripture. There's many, many others, Jesus, as Jesus put it, and such like. Many such like. There's many things. Not just I'm not just saying the Catholic Church does traditions that disobey the Bible. You know what? We do too. Yeah. I guarantee you, you have things you do that not just your daily life. Maybe it's something you do once, once a year. Anyways, I guarantee you we have traditions that go against the Bible. But you know what? Here, that's not what Paul's talking about, though, in this particular point. Here, Paul's saying, we need to follow traditions. So Jesus is talking about following traditions that go against the Bible. But Paul, he's talking about traditions that go with the Bible, that the Bible says to do. Can anyone think, just real, off the top of your head, anyone think of any of these traditions? The things the Bible says to do. The Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper. Hannah, you were right. That was one of the first things to come up. <laughs> All right. So I bounced a lot of these off, Hannah. All right, Lord's Supper. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11 talks about the Lord's Supper. Here's some of the traditions that the Bible tells us to do. First Corinthians 11 is after First Corinthians 6, in case anyone wants to know. <laughs> First Corinthians 11, let's look at verse 23. First Corinthians 11, 23. And those members of the body which we think... That's chapter 12. That's why it doesn't sound right. 11, 23. For I have received of the Lord... That which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner he took the cup which he had, when he had supped, and saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. <clears throat> For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this, the cup of the Lord unworthily, he shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let, let man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to his himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many of you are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. The Lord's telling us to do this off. We need to do the Lord's Supper. That is something we need to do. We do it to honor the Lord. It's one of the things, he, that's one of the traditions we have in the church. Any other traditions you think it, anyone's thinking of? I'll let you think of traditions that are bad. Bad traditions go against the Bible. 
traditions that go with the Bible. I have a list of a few. If anyone, I'll, I'll let you come up with any. If anyone know of any traditions the Bible says we need to follow, like Paul is telling us here? Baptizing by immersion. Baptism by immersion. When is that baptism? After you're saved. Baptism by immersion after salvation. Immersion, by the way, that doesn't just mean you baptize them or you leave them down there. You don't want to baptize them or leave them underwater. That's not baptism by immersion. Actually, if just a quick little thing about baptism. Baptism comes from the, from the Greek word baptizo. They didn't have an English word to go with it, so they just transliterated it. The baptizo literally means under and back up. If you look into the Greek about that, that's what the baptism is. Yes, the baptism. I did not put baptism on my list here, but yes, that's a good one. So, if you look, they were baptized to the church, many souls throughout the throughout all of Acts. Any other traditions you think you can think of? Soul winning. We'll go with that one. Soul winning. You know what? Look at uh, Matthew 28. Matthew 28 is one of my favorite soul winning. Gee, if I can find it, Matthew 28. Matthew 28, I'll start at verse 16, Matthew 28, 16. So many, that is a tradition we should follow, and often we don't. Think of it. Uh, over this past, I'll, I'll give you a month, throughout the entire month of March. How many people did you tell about the Lord? I, I would say this past week, but I'm going to give you a whole month. We'll, we'll say from March 1st till today, so that's almost a month and a half, two months. How many people did you tell about the Lord? Are we following this tradition? Matthew 6, 28, 16 says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they, were, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Now this is the last commandment that Jesus gave. He didn't just give this to the disciples. He gave this to the church, to all Christians. The last commandment. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. He's telling them not that actually puts a baptism one right in there with it. It's tradition. If people, if people think of a Christian, put yourself in the shoes of a lost person. I will almost never tell you to do this. Put yourself in the shoes of a lost person. First, person maybe the cashier at Walmart. When they think of a Christian, what do they think a Christian does? Or maybe a person that um, crack Barrel, or McDonald's. What would make them think of you as a Christian? The way we act. The way we act. How so? The way we dress. That's actually what I did put on here. The way we talk. The way we talk. Let's say My Micah, she goes to she goes to McDonald's. Pick up and she's just going to order herself a double quarter pounder, some you know something small. And she goes in there to order. Sorry, that is small. She goes there to order food, and she, she walks in. If she's wearing say a 
uh, tank top and uh, shorts. Well, the cashier, which is probably Tori in this case, will, will she look, will the cashier look at it, Micah, thinking that is a Christian? No. No. If uh, Micah walked in there and she's wearing, we'll say, a nice t shirt, a, a skirt, but they're not like gripping on her. Well, she, well, that cashier thinks this person's a Christian, mm -hmm. just by, like Mike said, just by the way she looks, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the way she's acting, the way we dress, makes a big difference in how people see us. Yes. If we, if, um, say even, even Stephen can walk into walk into McDonald's and the way he's dressed. You say, I'm not a Christian or I am a Christian. Right. It's not just the girls. Guys can do the same thing. Guys dress them modestly too. Actually, look at us. 1 Timothy 2 9. 1 Timothy 2, verse 9. Hmm. 1 Timothy 2, verse 9 says, in like manner that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearl or costly array. Is this telling girls not to wear any jewelry? No. No, it's telling them, you know what, don't don't flaunt it. Don't like show it off. We're not supposed to show off that we're Christian. We're supposed we're supposed to be a Christian. We're not supposed to show off our bodies. We're supposed to keep dressed modestly. So that goes for both guys and girls. If you look at 1 Thessalonians 5.22, we just abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes. That includes the way we dress. Yes. Amen. Includes the way we dress. We need to abstain from all appearance of evil. Any other Things that maybe a Christian, a Christian does that a lost person done, or the lost person thinks every Christian does because they do it tradi traditionally. Christians do this. Yes. Person You know what? Attend church. Attend church, which apparently all of you did today. Attend church. Um, Hebrews ten twenty five. I think I mentioned that this in Sunday school. The Hebrews 10.25 It's not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together but so much the more as you see the day approaching not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as a man or some is a lot of people do they think attend, like I said this in Sunday school a lot of people they will neglect church because they don't think they need church or they think they're going to be their own church. <clears throat> or So they say, that's the manner of some. Some people say, we don't need church. We're going to be our own church. We're going to worship God ourselves. We're going to worship God with our family because we, we don't need the church. Some people do that. As a man, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But so much the more as you see the day approaching. The closer it comes to Christ being here. The more people be forsaken church to want to either worship God at home, saying they don't need to worship God with everybody else. They don't need the church backing. They don't need the church support. They can do it themselves. That's kind of like, uh, let's say a platoon of soldiers says, we're going to go do it this ourselves. We don't need the rest of the army. We don't need the general the other platoons. We're going to go win this war ourselves. We don't need them. And not good warfare. It's not the way to be. Be what, do things God's way. We also look at this Sunday school Matthew 16, 18. Christ, he started the church. Christ started the church. He doesn't want us to forsake what he started. See that Matthew 16, 18, Christ is a, told Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. Christ started it. Let's not neglect it. When a lost person sees a Christian, 
They're going to assume that Christian is going to church every Sunday. Are we neglecting that tradition? Any others? I do have a few more here. I'm surprised one isn't mentioned yet. Things a lost person thinks a Christian does because traditionally Christians do this. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, whether it's a Bible thing or not, if they think Christ, the lost people think a Christian does it. Some wheels turning here. Hear a few whisperings, but nothing's being said. What about, um, first one I actually even thought of was praying before you eat. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Does a lost person pray before they eat? No. <clears throat> well, some, some do, but it's not praying to God. Um, Hannah was telling me about a family that they, they visited when they were in Poland. Uh, they, went to, they went there to eat, and the family sa said, this missionary family's here. They're Christians. We're going to pray before we eat. So they did, and they prayed the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. Which, is that bad? No. no. I mean, the Bible has it in it. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. But that's not praying. When you pray, you're talking directly to God. Praying is talking directly to God. But Christians pray before they eat. We see examples of this in Scripture. Can anyone think of any? How about the feeding of the 5,000? Oh, yeah. If you look there, Matthew 14, 19, the feeding of the 5,000, Matthew 15, 36, the feeding of the 4,000, we see Christ actually, when he broke the bread, he blessed it, then gave it. He prayed for it first, mm -hmm. then he distributed it. We see um, the Last Supper. Last Supper, we were just talking about that with the, the Lord's Supper. Before he broke the bread and handed it out, he prayed for it. Christ, did Jesus need to pray before he ate? I mean, he's God. He didn't need to, but he did. He did an example for us. As we see, that's one of the things we see there in... Verse 6 of 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, it says, And not after the tradition which he received from, he received from us, and we look down in verse 9, it says, But to make ourselves an example for you to follow. Christ wanted us to follow his example. Christ wanted us to do things his way. So he did it, so we do it. That's one of the things he did. Or if you look at 1 Corinthians 10, 31, most of you probably know this verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Whether therefore you eat or drink, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. If you're not praying before you eat, the one, you're not asking the Lord's blessing on that food. Amen. Two, you're not being an example, shining a light, say even at McDonald's, Cracker Barrel, Texas Roadhouse, um, wherever you are, whatever restaurant you go to, if you're not praying before you eat, you're not an example. We'll say you're eating with your coworkers. Think you stand out if you pray before you eat? It does. But the Lord wants us, the Lord set that example. Every non-believer expects a Christian to be praying before they eat. If they see you pray before they eat, say, we go to McDonald's. You see sometimes people there praying before you eat. When you first see them do that, you think, that's a Christian family. Mm -hmm. It shines a light. Any other, any other traditions? I have one here I did not expect anyone to say. And so far, I've read them. What about singing before church? Traditionally, the Baptist Church, they sing three songs, traditionally, they sing three songs, some churches four, 
Some churches five. Anyway, they sing three songs, take an offering, have service, sing an invitation song, dismiss. Or maybe it's sing one or two songs, then the offering, then one or two more songs, then the service, then the sing a song that's after the service, invitation song, and dismiss. That's tradition. That's the way they do it. Why? Is that scripture? Do you see an example anywhere in scripture that sing three songs before the preaching? No. No. Then why do we do it? Fun. Because it's tradition. It's fun. It is fun to sing, I agree. <laughs> it's tradition. That's why we do it. We'll say we had a service and we decided, you know, we're just going to go straight to the preaching. Is that bad? It's no fun, okay. Yeah. If we if we came and we say we uh, pastor came up here, the first thing he said, All right, welcome to Trinity Baptist Church. Let's pray. He prayed and then said, All right, turn your Bibles to Second Thessalonians chapter three. And then he started preaching. It's not tradition. It's not the way to do it because it's not tradition. Does that mean it's bad? Does that mean it's bad to sing three songs first? No. No. Why do we sing then? Why is it tradition? We're used to it. We're used to it? All right. Anyone ever, you ever read Psalm chapter 100? Make a joyful noise. Yes. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And I'm going to quit quoting it before I start messing it up. <laughs> Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his, into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy everlasting and his truth endures for all generations. He's telling us here, Sing! Sing! Make a joyful noise. So maybe you're someone who doesn't have a good musical voice. Sing. Make a joyful noise. Let's do things with song. So that's one of the things that was saying here. Also, if you look in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, it says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Let's sing. Let's sing together. We see numerous examples of the early church singing. Yes. Paul and Silas, you know what they even sang in prison? Yes. Let's sing. <laughs> Singing's good. Yes. Just because the tradition is not found in Scripture doesn't make it a bad one. But you know what? Let's not put that tradition and say every church needs to do it this way because the Bible says so. Let's not hold it against a church if they don't do something that way. Yeah. I'll take up another one. Traditionally, Christians tithe. Is tithing found in the Bible? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tradition. Alright, so how we tithe, we pass an offering plate down. It goes down a row and keeps going down. People put money in the plate. You know, that's just the way people tithe, right? Everyone should tithe that way. They should put the money in the plate as it goes by. That's how everyone should tithe. You know what? I'll go back to Africa. I was talking to a missionary. His name was Pat Gordon. Pat Gordon was in... He was in Congo, wasn't he? Where was he at? I think Congo. Anyways, not everyone in Congo has money to put in the offering plate. But you know what? They still said, we're going to tithe. So instead of um, having the plate go by, because it's a, they did that that way, they, people would literally be putting chickens or eggs in the offering plate as it went by, because that's the tithe they had. Or maybe they'd put some uh, bananas. <laughs> That's what they had. Yeah. So that's what they tithe with. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a dollar bill. They didn't have coins. If they don't have it, they can't tithe it. 
what they did, they had they used the barter system a lot. And the barter system doesn't involve exchanging currency. It involves exchanging goods or um, skills and services. So that's what they tithe with. They would tithe by helping repair the church. The church, maybe the church, the straw roof had a hole in it, sun shining through, so they, their tithe would be patching that hole. That's how they tithe. Just because traditionally we do it by the offering plate doesn't mean that's the way it needs to be. Some churches have a box in the back and people just walk by and they put their money in that box. They tithe different ways. Just because it's tradition, it is tradition for Christians to tithe. The Bible tells Christians to tithe, but it doesn't say how. It never tells us how. Anyways, what's another tradition? If you see, oh, let's go this way. If you see someone doing this, you will automatically assume he is not a Christian. Drinking. Drinking. Smoking. Smoking. Cursing. Drinking, smoking, cursing. Those are things traditionally Christians do not do. For, for example, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17 says, The body is the temple of God. Let's pretend. I just going to read that one. 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 17. That's a good one. I like it. So we'll turn there. Know ye not that, you, that you're, you, ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth within you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of, of God is holy, which temple ye are. The Bible tells us in numerous places that drinking is for fools. It says in Proverbs 20, 21, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, whosoever deceived thereby is not wise. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 18, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine. Drinking is, uh, a fault, is foolish. That's what the Bible says in here, and we know through science that smoking destroys our bodies from the inside out. That's what smoking does. But our body is the temple of God, so drinking hurts that temple. Smoking hurts that temple. Let's not do it. Christians traditionally don't smoke or drink. A lot of people, a lot of people in churches do smoke and drink. Does that make it right? No. no. Is smoking and drinking going to keep us out of heaven? No. Does that mean God wants us to smoke and drink, or is going to let us? He'll let us. Maybe. He might stop us. Yeah. But. Another one, back to 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearance of evil. If a person sees you smoking and drinking, your first thought is not that person's a Christian. That's right. It does not help us shine our light. Amen. And cussing was mentioned. Cussing, swearing, um, blaspheming the name of the, our Lord. Is that something we should do? No. no. If you hear someone walking into... I, I use McDonald's again, or uh, this one I'll use Walmart. So they're walking down the aisle of Walmart, a family arguing with each other. Is your first thought that that family's a Christian? No. Or if they're um, or at McDonald's, say they didn't get things the way they wanted to, so they slammed their sandwich, obviously they open it up and put the smear it all over the counter. But they do that and they're cussing at you. Is that something you, you think that person's a Christian? No. no. Colossians 4, 6 tells us to have our speech seasoned with salt. To watch your speech. That's not just involving cussing, but also arguing, strong language. What do you say? Are you going to... 
We're going to be speaking to the edifying of the body of Christ. It's like, how are we going to be talking? <clears throat> Psalms 19.14 says to have our words be acceptable in the sight of God. That's obviously cussing, swearing, taking the Lord's name in vain is not acceptable in the sight of God. But there's a lot of other things that are not acceptable in the sight of God that we say. And we say, oh, but I didn't cuss. So it was all right. Not necessarily. Just because you're not cussing and swearing doesn't mean your speech is good. But definitely do not take the name of the Lord in vain. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. It's one of the Ten Commandments. He said, this one's so important, I'm actually going to put it up at the top. One of the, I think it's the Third Commandment, isn't it? I think it is. I might be wrong. But, but it's right up there, one of, the, one of the first few commandments. He says, don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You hear Christians do that all the time. Very standard, very normal to hear. Things like, oh my God, that's taking the name of the Lord in vain. Or sometimes they modify it a little bit to make it to where it doesn't sound like exactly that. Such as they say G instead of Jesus. Personally, I find that worse. But let's not take the norm of the Lord our God in vain. Let's not cuss. Let's watch what we're doing. Let's try to follow the traditions set by Christ, set by the Apostle Paul, set by the disciples when they said, let's do things God's way, and this is how we do it. Let's follow the traditions that God gave us in here. Let's sing. Let's make melody in our hearts to the Lord. That doesn't just mean we sing in church. Let's sing everywhere. That doesn't mean go to Walmart and have a speaking choir there right by the cashiers. That's probably not the way to do it. But let's sing. Let's make a joyful noise. We can drive driving down the road, roll, roll your window down and sing. It's really fun to watch some people, whether you do that. Let's sing. Uh, let's pray before we eat. Not just before we eat. Let's always be in the. Let's always be in prayer. Pray without ceasing. Be praying. Be in constant communication with the Lord. That helps. These things help shine our light. Shine the light into the world, making it easier to do one of the first ones we mentioned of soul winning. If you're doing following the traditions that Christ has laid down for us and said, and traditionally Christians do it. If we're following those traditions, it makes it so much easier to spread the gospel because we're doing things God's way. Yes. Then next thing you know, we'll be building the church. More people will be coming to church. More people will be Christians. More people will turn their lives over to Christ. We will live a happier, joyful life because we are doing things God's way. So let's do it. Let's make ourselves an example for others. Let's make it to where people can follow our example because we are doing things God's way. Let's not do things that traditionally Christians do not do. You know what? They abstain from all appearance of evil. Just Does the Bible, for example, ever say it's wrong to go to a movie's? Does the Bible say if they sell alcohol at that restaurant, we're not supposed to go there? Actually, if you look, you'll never see a spot in the Bible where it specifically says, Thou shalt not drink, thou shalt not smoke. But traditionally, some of these things Christians do not do. One of the things Paul says, because people will think badly of me for doing this, do I think it's wrong? No. Am I going to do it? No, because I don't want to be a stumbling block to others. Amen. Some things may not be wrong, but they might be a stumbling block. 
So let's do things God's way. Let's not be a stumbling block. Let's follow, do the traditions people think Christians do. Let's not do the traditions people think Christians do not do. And if any tradition goes against the Bible, whether Christians traditionally do it or not, let's not do it. Let's follow the example set by the apostles. Follow the example of things set by Christ. And do things God's way. Right, let's pray. Lord, I pray and ask that you'll use this in our hearts and minds and our lives to help us do things your way. That we can be a brighter light for you in the community. A brighter light in Salem. When people look at us, they will see you. I pray and ask that you help us to do that. That we'll trust you, obey you, and do things your way. Pray us on your name. Amen. All right, go take your hymnals and turn actually to trust and obey. I think. Not that number. Trust and obey 261. 261. Sing a couple verses of that. If the Lord's spoken to you, or you want to come forward and talk to Him on the altar, feel free. Or sit there in your seat, talk to the Lord. But anything the Lord's told you about, showing you, maybe whether it's something I specifically mentioned or not, if the Lord's talking to you. Get yourself right with the Lord. If you could stand with me as we sing, trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He sending our way. I praise you for the word you've given us. I say you'll help us and remind us constantly throughout the week, throughout our daily lives, to do things your way. Thank you for the food you provided for us. I ask you to bless our bodies and give us a great time of fellowship. Praise all in Jesus' name. Amen.